Fortunately for America, one rubber company had been working long before World War II on the problem of developing a practical, general-purpose man-made rubber. By 1940, this privately financed venture was producing general-purpose man-made rubber at a plant in Akron, Ohio. But this production, important as it was, was just a molehill alongside the 650,000 long tons of rubber the nation used in 1941. Almost all of that, 97%, came from the Far East over an ocean lifeline 10,000 miles long. Japan knew this. She smashed Pearl Harbor, crippling our fleet. The enemy's goal was the rubber lands, and she got them in a few short weeks. The rubber ships stopped coming. Not only our war effort, but our very survival as a nation was in the balance as Uncle Sam faced the most critical period of his life. From Washington went out an SOS, and industry answered. The men in rubber, in petroleum, and in chemicals formed a combat team to fight the battle for man-made rubber. It was a battle we had to win, or else lose wars on two fronts and at home. It was only 20 months after Pearl Harbor that the largest plant for making man-made rubber went into full operation at Port Neches, Texas. With the rubber we needed, our war machine went into high gear. 